Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and don't like it, if you get to the Oh boy. If you get to the end and liked it, there we go. Uh give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. And oh, dogs moving. Okay, we forgot to take their collars off. Honestly, I'm just really excited about all of the books that I got this month. Quite a few were pre-orders. There was a handful of like impulse buys, but they were books that I had like got from the library and was like, oh, I want to reread this. Or they were books that I was like, I want to see what they look like in person. And I was just waiting and they happened to like be at my bookstore. And so yeah, these are the books that I, I've actually already read quite a few of these too, compared to normal amounts. So um, yeah, these are the books that I managed to accumulate in the month of August. So first off, this was an impulse buy in the sense that I really wanted it. I just didn't know what it was going to look like in person. And I saw it at my bookstore and just decided I had to have it. So The Twelve by Cindy Lynn. This is supposed to be Own Voices. Um, I think I, I'm trying to remember, um, I think it was on the Goodreads page. It said something like, Anim or animorphs meets something else but it's asian influences and the author herself is is asian so i to save her sister she must fulfill her destiny it's a middle grade it's so damn cute the the freaking cover and then there's the back it continues with like the uh, animal ghost thing um and the cover underneath is like this orange red thing that matches um the like mountainscape on here it's just so freaking pretty and i wanted to read this since i saw the blurbing for it like six months ago or so before it came out um and now it was here and it was a reasonable price 20 21 dollars is like my max for middle grade and this one hovers hovers at the 21 dollar mark in canada um so i was willing to do it it's gorgeous its own voices rep as well usagi's breath was so shallow that she was dizzy a priestess with the power of a tiger had manifested there right before her to be fair i'd freak out too it was impossible to deny the truth what the three bandits no heirs had been saying all along the 12 had not completely been wiped out a warrior still lived these those with zodiac powers were not alone after all and i'm pretty sure it keeps, I, I don't quote me on this, but I want to say it was something like Metamorphosis or Animorphs or whatever that like um, animal morphing book series was called. I never read it as a kid, but they were had some pretty iconically bad covers when I was younger. Um, but I think it was like that mixed with um, Avatar The Last Airbender sort of thing. So I'm so freaking excited to read this. Hopefully, I, I don't know why, but I look at this and I think I want to read it in winter. So maybe I'll wait until November, December to get to this one. But I'm so happy I own it. It's so freaking cute. Seriously, middle grade covers are just just killing it right now. I was so freaking excited. Uh, it showed up, I think, a couple days early. Um, my pre-order for The Dragon Republic by Ara Kwong. This is the sequel to The Poppy War, which was this, like, out of nowhere blindside amazing book that I read last year that, like, I don't think it was on anyone's radar. Uh, it's an issue as a debut author, um, and it's very heavily influenced by Chinese history. Um, and another beautiful thing is its own voices as well. So I, I I'm just uh, I. Huh. I'm so freaking excited about this book, but I'm like, I just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out when the heck I want to read it. Cause like, I want to reread the Poppy War with it. A lot happens at the end of the Poppy War. So I want to make sure I remembered all that and like, we'll comprehend this. But I'm also like, the Poppy War was so freaking good. Like, I'm nervous that it won't live up to it, even though everything I'm hearing from people is like, oh my God, it's better than the first book, which is good, but I'm just paranoid. Um, cause I've been led astray before by people hyping up books. Uh, and I'm just scared because like the Poppy War and it felt like forever until the Dragon Republic came out. And I don't believe there's any news on when the third book's supposed to come out. So I don't know. It's thick. It's thick. It's heavy. I love this, this, this theme of the books. I really hope uh, they continue this on for the full series and props to the, uh, the, the illustrator for this and the designer because they have back, they have the silhouettes and everything too. And like, the blue with, with this one and then the first one has like the burnt red as well and like just the under dust jacket being white and gray it's just so sleekly designed like seriously whoever whoever is the illustrator you get a million gold stars and yeah it just continues on Rin's story the absolute shit show really that is the end of the poppy war so much happens um and it was just a total upheaval so i i really want to find time maybe again in december um, or early 2020 to reread Poppy War and then read this right, right immediately back to back. So this book 
like just randomly appeared and like no one has talked about it. I haven't heard any reviews. I know it's getting a sequel. Um, and like I've seen this cover everywhere. And then I went to purchase it on Indigo, which is like our Barnes and Noble in Canada. And we had some random other cover, which I've not seen anywhere else. They don't have it in the U.S. So I don't know why we got a Canada specific color cover, which is absolute. It's not it's the worst. It's not the worst cover I've seen, but it's an absolute downgrade from the first book, like or from the original cover. So my beautiful, wonderful friend, Jennifer, um, I asked her to get it for me and then she refused to let me pay her. So <laughs> so she bought it for me. Um, the Bone Charmer by Brianna Shields. She wrote. Um, I have one of, uh, where did it go? Where did it, oh, here it is. Uh, she wrote The Poison Kiss. Uh, I haven't read this. I just got this, I think about in the last year or so. And I, 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 I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I think I'm going to try and read The Bone Charmer in October. Um, just because, like, it's got the bones and, like, Halloween and everything, right? I can put this book back now. It's, it's, it's heavier than it actually looks. It's very tightly bound up. It reminds me actually a lot of, that was one random thought I had from, um, The Call of the Rift Flight by uh, Jay Waller, which I read. Um, it's, it's, it seems like you're like, oh, it's like a, a like a, a hu like a human reasonable size book and then you hold it and you're like jesus what is what are these pages made of i think they've just really tightly bound them um because there doesn't seem to be quite as much uh space um in between pages i guess than an average book or i could just be totally making that up but um the bone charmer this is a freaking gorgeous gorgeous cover uh, i i love this cover so much i don't know why they changed it on the indigo website but and then the under dash jacket is this like raspberry color which I that's my color like go-to color for any clothes that I wear I've tried to get my hair this way a couple times and like it's like that color for like one wash and then it goes away and like but then like the rose gold foil on it I wish this series is bigger because I'm terrified they're gonna do a cover change but but then I'm also like they really didn't promote it so I don't think they were expecting it to sell really well maybe we'll just leave it alone fingers crossed um yeah the bone charmer fate is predictable choice is not it's blurred by kendra blake which i didn't love her stuff but i definitely get the vibe of kind of when you look at the the vibe and themes of like three dark crowns is it is that what kendra blake series is called the dark fates something with crowns in it um this kind of looks a little bit similar Tomorrow my future will be decided by my dead grand's fingers bones. It's how my whole life has been determined with bones and blood and snapping flames. It just sounds so freaking cool. And actually my friend Jennifer got herself a copy, I think, too, and she ordered this. So maybe we can, like, buddy read it. I don't know. It's just a freaking gorgeous cover. This book could suck, honestly, and I'm keeping it. Like, look at the freaking cover. I love this cover so much so much then my pre-order for containment by karen licks came in i really need to read squeeze this in in the month of september i need to read it i'm frustrated because the first book had an audiobook and the audiobook was fantastic for sanctuary this is the sequel to sanctuary it was really really good and because they're on the spaceship and there's like monsters and aliens like you could hear in the background like it was it was a really well done audiobook and then there's no audiobook for book two what the heck what are you doing man and i know it sold well enough because they extended the book contract for the series to be from a duology to a trilogy. It's 2019. They're really, I, I don't know what reasoning a major publisher, honestly, at this point would have to buy a book, right? But not a, not an audiobook. It's 2019. You need to release audiobooks with it. It's an accessibility issue, but as well as, you know, the demand is audiobooks right now. Like I can tell you as a, someone with library and stat reporting ability, Audiobook usage is absolutely through the roof. That's what brings in readers and non-readers um, for a plethora of reasons um, as adults. And that's going to just keep going up. So I don't know why people, it, it takes away from the visibility of your book too. I know so many people who don't actually physically go into the library. They just scroll on their library's Libby. And if your book's not there, and also shout out because she is a Canadian author. And I remember when she was in the TPR and Beyond group, she said that there was going to be, I believe it's a Blackfoot um, side character in here. And she was a teacher in Alberta. So she has access to um, a couple connections. Uh, Alberta teachers, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of other provinces as well, have uh, things called FNMI liaisons, which is First Nations, Métis, and Inuit liaisons. So people from Indigenous communities to help connect because they've updated a lot of the curriculum to be less colonial white people and start teaching about actual like local history of you know local indigenous communities so i remember her mentioning that she was reaching out to that person to make sure it was authentic and i really 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 hope it is i picked this book up from the library 
and loved it and got like a couple chapters in and was like I have to go buy this it's so good so I picked up my own copy of Foundry Side I like the paperback of this actually the texture they didn't have the hardcover at my work um or at my bookstore here um and the next closest bookstore is like six hours away so um but it's also way cheaper than the hardcover I think the hardcover is almost forty dollars this was 22 so huzzah for astronomical Canadian book prices that make absolutely no sense even with currency exchange involved so yeah but I own this now and I'm so freaking excited for whenever I think it's called Shorefall is the sequel um to come out in January 2020 and in the exact same situation I got well I guess not the exact same situation I borrowed the audiobook from the audible dreamscape subscription where you get to like rent books the way you would at a library um for like two dollars extra on your subscription but just like romance genre certain titles it's kind of like kindle unlimited some books are in there some of them are not um and i got i think it was to chapter four of the kiss quoting when the main character hires a prostitute and then pulls out a taser to be like oh it's okay i brought safety protection and i was like oh i i need to own this book <laughs> It just reminded me of so many things and just the deadpan comedic tone of this series. This book was amazing. So I literally got to chapter four, chapter four, or chapter seven. I think it was chapter four in this book, chapter seven in Foundry Side. Um, that I was like, cool, I have to own this. And my bookstore had it in stock. So I ran to the bookstore and bought it and then came home and read it. Also, Helen Huang has just pulled me down this weird dark hole that we'll get into in my monthly lessons video. Well, I was there picking up the kiss quote and I figured, what the heck? <laughs> So I picked up The Bride Test, which is the sequel companion, um, the main character, uh, the male prostitute in the first book, Michael. His cousin is the main male in here. Both of these have autism, own voices representation, which is fantastic in a main cast. I don't honestly think I've ever read that. Um, autism rep as a main cast, let alone own voices. And I am so dang excited. I think the third book is called Heart the Principal. It's Quan, I think it's supposed to be the main character? I don't know. I'm just so freaking excited for the next book and I just will buy anything Helen Huang writes at this point. It's it's gotten bad really quickly. Then my gorgeous, wonderful UK cover of All the Bad Apples by Maura Valley Doyle came in and I read it like I think a week later. <laughs> um, this is the UK cover. You can see there's lots of like there's this ombre of the orange and the pink and it's just so freaking pretty and all the rotten apples on the outside and then the dead kind of thing at the bottom. The illustrations were done by Charlotte Day. Charlotte Day, girl, you did ace job. Uh, I love this. I don't hate the US cover. Um, it's just a very like white girl on a cover. <laughs> this is like, I, I like books that have actual design and like an illustrator hired. Like, I feel like that at least makes the justification for me spending the money on the book um, rather than like them taking a stock photo and like doing something having their like unpaid intern type in something on like Photoshop in a font and like be like, here's your cover. Um, this is just more my speed. Um, and I think it's actually pretty, um, having read the book now too, I don't quite know what the, f what the US cover has to do <laughs> with it. Um, I think all the little details here, like the rotten apples and the girl at the bottom and the skulls, once you read it, it's going to make sense. Um, the, girl on the cover with her face her eyes wide open I'm not totally sure what what how that relates um it doesn't necessarily not relate it's just weird at least it, it it's it, the main the girl on the US cover is a ginger and the characters in here are ginger so at least they got that right because there is nothing I detest even more than people on cover than a book where they're like oh this brunette black girl and then the cover is the white blonde girl and you're like what what? What is happening here? My pre-order of 10,000 Doors of January came in early. Uh, this is by uh, Alex Hilt Harrow. I believe this is actually a debut. Um, this cover. Like, oh. I thought they were going to make the doorknob either foil or lifted. They didn't, but it's actually really, like, nice detail. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but, like, they've even got, like, kind of, like, erosion, like, with some green on the inside, like, the doorknob details, the way it would, like, with where um in the real world and there's these keys all floating around the the um, the flowers and oh, it's just there's a lot of blurbs off the back too like a buttload of blurbing um christina henry tamara pierce melissa albert erica swiler peng shepherd gwenda gwenda bond matthew sullivan and kat howard um i've read two of those authors i think 
um, and I've heard of a couple of other, other of them. Um, it's just so pretty. It's deckled edges as well. And then like the under thing is like this purple. Oh, this is like just a heaven book design for me. And then the spine is the yellow and the black. And like it's oh, I just yes. Just so much yes to this. Just yes. I oh, I am so excited to finally read this book too. I, I've been so hyped since I found out about it. But like this cover though. And the last book that I managed to accumulate in the month of August was Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This actually came in at the very end of the month, about uh, five or six days early. This is going up. This video is going up on Tuesday. This book comes out, I think, today um, on this Tuesday. So I've read it. It's fantastic. Um, but I was just so excited that my pop, my copy came early. It's kind of smooth, but also kind of lifted. Like the texture of it is kind of cool um this is a romance historical romance debut or a romantic historical yes a romantic historical um debut uh, by evie denmore and it's the first and i believe it's going to be a quartet i've read i swear to god i read somewhere it's supposed to be four books but there's only two online right now on goodreads um a, dar a daring oxford rebel takes on a powerful duke in a love story that threatens to upend the british social order and i love when I read this book too, like there's a specification when I was reading it, she's like, oh, and then the, she got put in this pink dress. I'm like, oh, pink dress. I've seen a pink dress somewhere. And it's because it's on the front. Um, yeah, love this book. But like also like I, I, I love this cover design. I, yes. Oh, it says historical romance on the back. Sorry. But it's more of a romance than, it's a romance that is then a historical fiction. It's not a historical fiction with, anyways, whatever. Um, yeah, I love this. I also love the stamping of the of the series name on the side here. A League of Extraordinary Women novel. And this is the first book in that series. And yeah, I love it. And it's just so pretty. And I love that I have it. So those are all the books that I managed to accumulate in the month of August. I'm happy with just like, I, I really did limit myself, I think, um, compared, especially with like in preparation for what is coming in September. My pre-orders have already started shipping and I'm already panicking and like, thinking and like praying and like whoo at my bank cards and being like please survive this man um and I'm also happy that I've already read quite a few of these already so it's I feel like I'm I with the amount of books that I read in the month of August and then the books that I actually managed to accumulate I like won this month you know what I mean so I will link all of these books in the description down below to their Goodreads pages and I will also link all of my social media if you follow me I will follow you back